Hi, this is Marcia Mason. I'm an artist with Rancho Cordova Arts and I'm here today to show you the second textures in watercolor. Today I'm going to show you five different ways to do texture, not in a wash, just by itself. First the dry brush, then spatter, then stamping, stencils, and the last one I'm going to keep as a surprise because it's too fun. Okay, so here's something that we started with last week. Um, let's do the dry brush first. Now I'm just going to use a round brush, any old size will do. Adjust according to how big of a thing you want to make with your dry brush. What dry brush does is when it hits the paper, and you have to use a paper that's either cold press or rough for this because you're going to be hitting the the hills, not the valleys of your paper. And these papers have little divots all over them. So we're just going to skim the top. And it's called dry brush for a reason. We're going to, I just put it in the paint here and I'm going to dry it out a little bit so it's quite dry. When you paint on a piece of paper, it's nice to have a little piece that you can uh, just experiment with. So I'm going to do that right over here. Okay, I'm getting a nice dryness. So let's do, let's see if we can do, oh yes, this is going to work out fine, 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 fine. This is, let's call it a stream, shall we? Gets a little wider as we go along. I'm using a phthalo blue. This is a staining pigment, so if you get it on your hands or your clothes, you're going to have a little trouble getting it out. So, uh, so, but it makes nice darks. And that's what I'm going to do right now is make a little darker. Yes, right there. I'm going to add some, what is that, permanent rose to my phthalo blue and get something kind of, actually it's kind of purple but a kind of a dull purple. I'll make it a blue purple. So this is not dry brush, but well, maybe I'll do dry brush. Here we go. Take out some of that, some of that wetness. And oh yeah, here we go. So what you're showing is light hitting, hitting the, uh, the water in this case, but you might want to make fence posts Let's say you got a fence post and a brown here. You might want it to be quite dark on one side. Dark, dark. But to be quite light on the other. So let's just, there we go. Fence post. So it's pretty handy. Dry brush technique. Now, uh, we did a little spatter in the last video. That was into a wet wash. This time we're going to do it into dry. Um, so the amount of water and pigment you hold on your brush is going to determine the size of the drops pretty much. So we're going to get all of these nice and juicy, all three sizes here, and we'll just do them kind of separately. So you can see. Okay, we're going to start out with the big one first. All right. Now some people, you can tap it with your finger. You can tap it with your hand. Okay, that's, that's our big brush. Here's the medium size. Okay, you can see that's a little bit smaller. Okay, nice. And our little small one, let's see what we get. That's much finer. So you can see uh, a difference in size between those three. It's all about how much pigment and water you can hold on the size of the brush you're using. Now, when we did this on a wet wash, it spread them out and looked a little more gentle, but this is just the dot that you get there when you spatter. Now, stencils. Stencils are fun. Here's one that's just a a bunch of dots and you can get water on your on your um, uh, in the holes in the stencil different ways I like to use a 
uh, spray bottle. So what I'm going to do is just take a piece of cardboard and mask that off so it doesn't get the rest of it wet. There we go. And I just sprayed a couple of sprays. It's pretty wet. And let me show you what that does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can go into one of these wet ones. Let's see. I better hold it down. That one isn't entirely wet. Let's try that one. And that one. Okay. So you can put your brush in there, but this is a fun technique that I wanted to show you. This is a piece of sandpaper. It's an emery board. I like it because I can just hold it in my hand so conveniently and it is washable. And then this is a watercolor pencil. This one is an ink tense and it is intense, so I like to use that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand some of this pencil right over my wet uh, watercolor paper. And this, there we go. You can see I'm just kind of scraping it away. Yeah. So you can do as much or as little as you want. This makes kind of fun backgrounds. When you're doing something whimsical, you can put a stencil in the background and uh, it just makes the painting a little more lively. Okay, let's get one that's really, oh yeah, really dark here. Okay, so uh, you can see I've taken it down a bit. That's quite all right. And then lift carefully. Ha ha! I kind of like that. So, this is what a stencil can do. You know, it doesn't have to be a stencil where there are holes in it. You can also use something that obstructs what's around it and, and do uh, color around an object, too. And I'm just going to use the brush for that. Stick that in there. See what we get with that little bunch of spray I put in there. Okay, well, this might not be quite as precise, but there, we get the idea. If you spray a little uh, more effectively than I did, you'll probably get a nice round um, masked area from an object. It's the same principle as the stencil. Let's see now, Let's. that's uh, the dry brush and the spatter. Let's do a little stamping. This one's pretty fun. Get a little water here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, this is just very fancy material, cardboard. I'm going to just dip it in my paint. We shall see what we get. Let's try right here. There we go. Stamping. Yes. Oh, I do like that. Let's do that again. Right there. A third time. Okay, and then if you cut it a different way, same material. Here we go. Make that a little greener. And stamp. Okay, so there are all kinds of different cardboards. You can start tearing them apart when you get those packages in the on your front porch and and uh, check out different kinds to use for stamps. You can also take those. Uh, uh, it's like a uh, styrofoam, a foam material that sometimes uh, meat or vegetables come in, and uh, you can actually press in there and make your own stencils, which is pretty darn fun. Now, let's talk about the weirdest one that I didn't tell you we were going to do. It is... Bubbles. Okay, now... Bubbles are really weird. If you can get them to be in a single layer on your paper, you're going to get a better effect. 
And the reason I say that is from playing with it a lot. <laughs> what happens is your middle bubble will kind of stay put, but the bubbles on the outside of it are going to, as they pop, they are going to pull into the middle. So I'm just dropping some really wet pigment into the, uh, the places where the bubbles come together. And it goes right to the bottom, but you can see things sliding around. Well, every time it slides around, it's gonna smear a little bit. But if you use, and I have done this, if you use a kind of pale transparent color, like one of the cool yellows, not a cadmium, those are uh, fairly opaque, but uh, an areolan yellow, for instance, uh, or a permanent rose or a cobalt blue, what you will get is um, kind of a lovely diffuse background that's just kind of interesting because it has white texture. And um, you can, when I've taken trips sometimes, I've uh, taken a pack of like eight by tens and done this on them at home before I go. I'm gonna blow on that. Put it out of its misery. There we go. <laughs> So sometimes this works better than other times. These little clusters of bubbles that are left at the end, sometimes those, those can be pretty intense, and that's really the most definition you'll get. But I think it's kind of fun, just something different to do with the watercolor. But they make a kind of interesting backgrounds that you can then do a painting over because those transparent colors are kind of pale, usually, uh, and you can use lots of water so they are pale. Now let's do sponging last and that is very fun. I have two kinds of sponges. This one is human made and this one is a natural sea sponge that uh, coral made in the in the ocean. So let's get a different piece of paper. Yes. Right there. Oh, by the way, these are what bubbles look like when you're play, play, playing. Trying to get it right. You can see some of them worked pretty well. These were made with um, a very staining pigment that's uh, phthalo green. And, oh, you can, actually, I'm going to lift this up a little bit. This is lovely texture all through here, but quite a bit lighter. Um, these were that size of bubble and uh, in a single layer. So uh, I just lucked out. I don't know the secret of it, but just see what works. I think it's the humidity, the amount of soap, and the size of the bubbles. If your paper is in a block where it's flat, it's uh, got rubber cement all around the sides of it, and stays flat, you'll get uh, probably a better effect when it, the paper bubbles, then things fall away more and you get more of that movement. But if movement is what you want, that's the way to do it. So I'm just gonna get these wet and I'm gonna make a little tree. First I'll just show you what, um, let's see, where's my green? I'm using a perylene green. It's also called shadow green in some of the brands. And the reason I like, well, one of the reasons I really like it, besides that it's a very strong mixing color, is that uh, when, as you lighten it, it looks like an evergreen forest. And having grown up in the Pacific Northwest, it's like, oh, that's my paint color right there, Pacific Northwest. I'm just gonna put this down flat so you can see what, what it looks like just the the way it is. Oh, come on. Give it up. Oh, well, it's a little blurry, but you get the idea. It's not a bad pattern. Um, it helps that I uh, tore the edges of this so that it's uh, not a straight um, manufactured cut looking edge. 
Okay, and here's our natural sponge. You can see it's a lot more irregular. I've got these little fringy areas right here. Let me get some fringe here. Come here. So a lot more variety in this one, but this one isn't bad either. In fact, I could probably just take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my French ultramarine blue, and together you can make black with that, but I'm just going to make a little trunk right here. And maybe a little branch through here, and we see a little bit there. Yes. And, and then we can get a little shadow down here. Just another way to apply pigment on the paper besides using, there we go, a little bit of blue down there too, besides using a brush or a twig. Haha. <laughs> now, here's my natural brush. I'm going to use that same Perylene Green. I have two brands of it actually. I have a the whole bind is a shadow green. Uh, Windsor Newton calls it the, the pigment name, the Perylene Green. Put a little bit more on my palette because this really soaked it up. And uh, when you put them out on your palette, you can probably can't see it on the camera, but they are slightly different colors. Okay, so I'm going to smoosh that around, technical term. And let's see what we can do here. Oh boy, that is just so yummy. Okay. And whoop, back off there a little bit light. And okay. Uh, drag it. Oh, dragging's kind of nice. Let's do a little more of that. Oh, and okay, and I want something just right there in the middle too, like right there with a little more blue in it. So, picked up a little bit, and uh, we're going to leave this one kind of red. It's still wet, but let's just stick a little redwood trunk right there in that. And we can pick up our brush and add to this. For some branches. Oh, I don't like that. Actually, I like this better. There we go. So what we end up with is uh, beautiful irregular patterns, just like nature makes sometimes. And we'll just pull our trunk right up into the blank spots. There we go. And there you have a very quick redwood. Now redwoods do have, uh, and, and other conifers, do actually have quite a bit of the bark color in them. So you could, uh, let's just try this. I might, I might not like this, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, we're just going to stick some right in there. That has a little bit more of the burnt sienna in it. And you know what? I'm going to pick some of this up there so I have a place to put it. Come here, burnt sienna. Oh, it looks like it's gotten a little bit wet. But you can see that a sponge really does make lovely, lovely colors. Oh, it almost looks like a hedgerow right there. In front of the, yes, in front of the redwood with, with a, a stream that runs through it. Oops, that's not dry enough. That's what happens. The paint went right down into still doing it. There we go. There's our dry brush. Oh yeah. 
And as I'm going, I'm turning that to give it a little bit of a little bit of watery feel. So that is our lesson in texture today. We did dry brush. We did some spatter in three sizes. Big spatter, middle spatter, little spatter. We used a stencil and we sanded our watercolor pencil over it. And we did some bubbles, and I'm going to show you. Since these are still drying, and there are just a few little places where we're going to get the detail, show you some of this. You can see I did it many times, but there is some lovely, lovely texture. Lovely, let's get that light out of the way. Lovely texture in here. So, I hope you have fun with these different textures, different techniques, and if you do, make a painting with any of them, or just make a painting of anything. Please post it on our Facebook page, Rancho Cordova Arts, and check out our videos. We show them every weekday at four, but uh, we have an archive of them on the Rancho Cordova Arts channel on YouTube. Thank you for your time today. It's been fun, and happy painting.